Hi guys, so this is a continuation of, of the male reproductive organ. So we now discuss the male sex act. So the male sex act is uh, composed of three, which is emission, ejaculation, and resolution. So when we say male sex act, it is a complex series of mucoses that results in erection of the penis and secretion of mucus into the urethra. Uh, emission and also ejaculation. So when we say emission, it is the movement of sperm cell, mucus, and prostatic secretions and seminal vesicle secretion, technically all secretions, into the prostatic membranous and your spongy urethra. After emission, here comes the ejaculation, which is the forceful expulsion of, the, of all that secretion that have accumulated in the urethra, the exterior part of the reproductive genitalia. So the sensations together with ejaculation is normally interpreted as pleasurable and it occurs during the male sex act and results in intense sensation called an orgasm. So a phase called resolution occurs after ejaculation in which the penis becomes flexed and an overall feeling of satisfaction exists. So there is a similar counterpart of this resolution in a female sex act. So after the satisfaction exists, the male is unable to achieve another erection and second ejaculation. So the male sex act is composed of a sympathetic and parasympathetic um, action potential. So first, when we, uh, when a male is in the process of erection, which is the first major component of the male sex act, the neural stimuli cause the penis to enlarge and become firm. So specifically, uh, between parasympathetic and sympathetic, the one acting here is the parasympathetic action potential from the sacral region of your spinal cord. Um, this um, sacral region causes the arteries that supplies the blood to the erectile tissue to dilate or enlarge the pool of the uh, blood vessels. So when the blood vessels then fill small venous sinuses called sinusoids in the erectile tissue and compresses the veins, which reduces the blood pressure and the blood flow from the penis. The second process of the male sex act just before the uh, resolution is the ejaculation, which then results from the contraction of the smooth muscle in the walls of the urethra and the skeletal muscle surrounding the base of the penis. So as we all know, the smooth muscle is, con is um, controlled by your parasympathetic action potentials while your skeletal muscle is a voluntary muscle which is uh, which is controlled by your sympathetic action potentials that surrounds the base of the penis so just before the ejaculation the action potentials are sent to the skeletal muscle that surrounds the base of the penis so the rhythmic contraction are produced that force the semen out of the urethra resulting in ejaculation. In addition, the muscle tension increases throughout the body. So as I have said a while ago, the last stage of the male act is the resolution where the um, penis becomes flaxseed and overall feeling of satisfaction exists and the male is unable to achieve erection and second ejaculation. So let us move on to the second part of this topic, reproductive system. We have the female reproductive system. So as we all know, the female reproductive organ is consists of the ovaries, the uterine tubes or the fallopian tubes, the uterus, the vagina, the external genitalia, and the mammary glands. So the internal reproductive organ of the female are located within the pelvis between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The uterus and the vagina are in the midline when an, with an, an ovary to each side of the uterus. So, the, so nasa gitna ang um, vagina in the uterus and within uh, both sides of the body is your ovary. So we have two ovaries and the internal reproductive organs are held in place with the pelvis by a group of ligament. We call that group the broad ligament. 
So the first part of the female reproductive organ that we will be discussing is the ovaries. So the ovaries is the primary female reproductive organ. So uh, it produces oocytes and sex hormones and follicles. So one on either side of the uterus are both functioning and producing, so producing oocytes and sex hormones. So we have the ovarian ligaments which anchors the ovaries to the uterus. We also have the suspensorial ligaments which anchors the ovary to the pelvic cavity. So we have the ovarian follicle. This follicle also develop at different time of a female um, female life. So uh, these ovarian follicles are the cells in the ovary that contains or surrounds the oocytes. We will discuss the development of the oocytes as the female ages as well as the development of the follicle similar to the oocyte. This is a different stages of the ovarian follicle and this is also uh, a structure of the ovary. So there are different stages of the oocyte. So first it will undergo a stage we call oogonia. After oogonia it will become the primary oocyte. And after the primary oocytes, it will become the secondary oocyte plus polar bodies. Unlike in male meiosis, the female meiosis have an unequal division that, that results into polar bodies. So after ovulation, if it will proceed uh, after ovulation, the secondary oocyte can be fertilized by a sperm. When it is fertilized, it will then form a zygote which consists of 23 uh, chromosomes from the egg and 23 chromosomes from the sperm. Again, from oogonia, primary oocyte, secondary oocyte with polar bodies. Together with the development of the oocyte, the follicle also develops. The follicle surrounds the oocyte. So as we discussed, when a female is in her mother's uterus, her ovaries have already begun oocyte formation. So the primary oocyte present at birth are surrounded by a follicle that we call primordial follicle. Uh, a primordial follicle is a primary oocyte surrounded by a single layer of flat cell we call granulos granulosa cells. So once puberty begins, some of the primordial follicle become primary follicles. So in primary follicles, the oocyte enlarge and single layer of granulosa cells become enlarged and form a cuboid-like cells. So several layer of granulosa cell form and a layer of clear material, we call it the zona pellucida, is deposited around the primary oocyte. The primary follicle will then develop into a secondary follicle. The follicle development occurs approximately every 28 days and is under hormonal control. So the primary follicle becomes secondary follicle as fluid-filled spaces called vesicles form among the granulosa cell in a capsule that we call theca. Later on, this theca will then combine and then we call it the antrum. So the follicle is called the mature follicle or graphium follicle. So the primary oocyte is pushed off to one side and lies in a mass of granulosa cell. We call that mass the cumulus cells. So again, the development of the follicle starts from a primordial follicle when you're just a baby, then it will be primary follicle during puberty. The primary follicle will then become secondary follicle and the secondary follicle will become mature follicle or we call it the graphene follicle. So in most cases, only one follicle uh, begin to develop and forms mature follicle that undergoes ovulation. So the other follicle degenerates. After ovulation, the remaining cells of the ruptured follicle, as we have said, it degenerates, are transformed into a glandular structure, structure that we call corpus luteum. If pregnancy occurs, this corpus luteum enlarges in response to a hormone secreted by the placenta. We call that hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone. So if pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum lasts 10 to 12 days and then begins to de de degenerate. 
So we have the uterine tube or also called the fallopian tube which is also called the umbilical. So it is of course associated with the ovaries. So part of the uterus extends towards the ovaries and receives the oocytes. So we also have the fimbriae here on which which is the fringe like structure around opening of the uterine tube. So it helps whip oocyte into the uterine tube. It is a finger like structure. So we have a procedure that we call tuba tubal ligation. This is a sterilization of the female. Next part, as we have see, seen in the diagram or in the illustration a while ago, is the uterus. The uterus is a pear-sized structure located in the pelvic cavity. So, of course, its function is to receive, retain, provide nourishment or fertilize oocyte where embryo resides and develop. So, the implantation happens in the uterus. So, it is the body or the main part of the female reproductive organ and it, uh, it is uh, composed of the cervix, which is a narrow region that leads or extends into the vagina. The uterus is divided into three layers. So it is a wall layer. So we have the serous or the outermost layer. We call it the perimetrium. We have the muscular or middle layer. We call it the myometrium. And we have the innermost layer, which is um, epithelial tissue. It's sloughed off during menstruation. We call it the endometrium. So the myometrium is uh, composed of smooth muscle cells. So again, endometrium is very important. It's sloughed off during menstruation. Lastly, we have the vagina, which extends from the uterus to the outside of the body. So uh, it is a female copulation organ that receives the penis during intercourse. It is uh, it allows the menstrual flow. It also is involved in childbirth. So it contains very muscular walls and mucous membrane. It also has a very acidic environment to keep the bacteria out. So do note that vagina is a self-cleaning organ. There are a lot of studies that the douching or cleaning the vagina with water after urinating or doing other activities introduce more bacteria into it and cause um, urinary tract infection. So we have five different parts of the female external genitalia that is a group we call the vulva. So we have the mons pubis, the labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, and the vestibule. So the mons pubis is the fatty layer of the skin covering the pubic symphysis or the bone. We have the two labia, which is the labia majora, which is the larger outer folds of the skin, which is equivalent to the male scrotum. We have the labia minora, which is thinner than the majora, and it is the inner fold of the skin. So we have the last two, which is the clitoris and the vestibule. The, pref the prefuse is where the two labia minora unite over a clitoris. So it is more likely an area than an external genitalia. So the clitoris is a small erectile structure located in the vestibule, which is equivalent to the male penis. So the vestibule is the space in which the vagina and the urethra are located. So the mammary gland is also a part of your female reproductive organ. So this is the organ that produces milk production in breast and it is a modified sweat gland. It is a type of holocrine gland. Female breasts begin to enlarge during puberty and it consists of lobes covered by an adipose tissues. So lobes, ducts, lobules are altered during lactation to expel more milk. So here is an overview illustration of the maturation of oocyte and follicle that we have discussed a while ago. So you may also view this photo in your um, anatomy physiology syllabus book. So we have been talking about ovulation over and over a while ago. So what really is ovulation? Ovulation is the release of the oocyte from the ovary due to the luteinizing hormone secreted from the anterior pituitary gland. So uh, we also have discussed the corpus luteum a while ago. So corpus luteum is hormonal, hormonal stimulated 
specifically the human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone which is produced in the placenta. So corpus luteum is a mature follicle after an ovulation. So it degenerates if the egg is not fertilized and it pursues its uh, development when the egg is fertilized. So let's have a review of your endocrine system. So the female sex hormone, we have in the female sex hormone, we have the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is produced by the hypothalamus and stimulates the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone produced by your anterior pituitary gland. So what is LH and FSH? When we say luteinizing hormone, it causes the ovulation. Again, as I have said, it is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. Follicle stimulating hormone is produced in the anterior pituitary and prompts follicles in the ovaries to begin its development. We also have estrogen and progesterone. So when we say Estrogen, it is stimulated by LH and FSH and it causes the proliferation of the endometrial cell and development of the mammary gland, especially the doxic system. So, uh, estrogen promotes development and maintenance of the secondary sex characteristic. While progesterone, similar to estrogen, is also stimulated and controlled by uh, FSH, LH, as well as estrogen, causes an enlargement of endometrial cell and secretion of the fluid from the uterine glands. So it also helps in maintenance of the pregnancy state and development of the mammary gland, especially the alveoli, and development, similar to estrogen, development of the secondary sex characteristic of the female. So we move on from the parts and start female puberty. What is female puberty? So female puberty begins between 11 to 13 year old and is usually completed by 16. We call the first episode of the menstrual bleeding a menarche. So the vagina, uterus, uterine tube, and external genitalia begin to enlarge together with the breast and the hips. So elevated level of estrogen and progesterones are secreted by the ovaries. So it has a different effect on the uh, GnRH or gonadotrophin releasing hormone produced by the hypothalamus. So estrogen and progesterone can be positive or negative feedback depending on the age of the female. So menstrual cycle is a series of changes that occur in sexual, sexually mature, non-pregnant female. So of course, if you're pregnant, there will be no menses. And uh, if you are lactating, there's a chance that for about six, uh, uh, less than or six months, there will be no menses. So lactation is also used by some uh, women to prevent pregnancy. So menses is a time when the endometrium is shedding from the uterus or when the endometrium is sloughing. So an average of the menstrual cycle is 28 days and it results from cyclical changes that occur in the endometrium. So in day 1 to 5 menses, uh, shedding of the endometrium happen. So the menstrual bleeding, or the, we, we call it the menstrual bleeding or menses, and the estrogen and progesterone levels are low. Follicle begins to mature. Day 16 to 13, or we call it the proliferative between end of menses and ovulation. So the endometrium here is rebuilding and the estrogen level begins to increase. Progesterone levels be low and the follicle mature. So during the day 14 of the menstrual cycle, which we call the ovulation, oocyte is released due to luteinizing hormone. Estrogen and progesterone levels are both high and the cervical mucus is thinning. So the day 15 to 28, which we call the secretory, is between the ovulation and the next menses. So during this time, the endometrium is preparing for implantation, whether fertilization will happen. And the estrogen level is uh, decreasing, the progesterone level remains high. Again, the cervical mucus thickens.
this is a summary of the menstrual cycle. You can also view this uh, photo or illustration in your series anatomy and physiology book. So this is a summary of the days and the levels of the hormones during those four stages. Four stages is the menses, the proliferative, the ovulation, and the secretory. So menopause is a natural cycle of a female's timeline. So when we say menopause, it is a time when ovaries secretes less hormone and the number of follicle in ovaries is low. So there is a lot of physical effect. We have the hot flashes, fatigue, irritability also may occur. So estrogen replacement therapy may be used to decrease the side effect, but estrogen replacement therapy or the ERT also have different side effects to our body. So it is known to have an increase in heart attacks and other similar effects in the body. So the female sexual behavior similar to males is also dependent on the hormone. Testosterone-like hormone and possibly estrogen affects the brain cell and influence sexual behavior. Psychological factors also play a role in sexual behavior of the female sexual so during sexual excitement, the erectile tissue within the clitoris, which is the counterpart of the penis in, uh, in male, and around the vaginal opening become a forged with blood. So the mucous gland within the vestibule, which is the external genitalia, secretes small amounts of mucus with large amounts of extruded into the vagina through its wall. So the stimulation of the female genitals during sexual intercourse and psychological stimuli normally trigger an orgasm or climax. So the vaginal uterine smooth muscle as well as the surrounding skeletal muscle contract rhythmically and the muscle tension increases throughout much of the body. So after the sex act, there is a period of resolution which is characterized by an overall sense of satisfaction and relaxation. So uh, the orgasm of the female does not affect the ovulation part or function of its reproductive organ. There are a lot of methods used by both male and female to prevent pregnancy. So either by preventing fertilization or contraception, we call it contraception, or by preventing the implantation of the developing embryo. So method includes behavioral, barrier, chemical, and also surgical. In behavioral method, we have the abstinence or refraining from sexual intercourse, which is 100% effective in preventing pregnancy. We also have the coitus interruptus or the withdrawal um, method. It is very unreliable method. And 23 out of 100 women became, became pregnant while relying on this method. We have the natural family planning. That requires abstaining from sexual intercourse near the time of ovulation. So it is also known as the calendar method. So about 9 women out of 100 become pregnant while using natural family planning. We also have the lactation. Um, as I have said a while ago, the continuous breastfeeding often stops the menstrual cycle for up to the first six months after childbirth. So as long as the baby is exclusively breastfeeding and the mother does not resume menstruation while lactating, this method, of course, is 99% effective. So we also have different types of, um, of contraception. We also have the barrier method. Uh, say, for example, the condom, which, which is a sheath made of animal membrane, rubber, or plastic, such as latex. Similar to the male condom, we also have the vaginal condom. So, methods to prevent sperm cells from reaching the oocyte once they are in the vagina include the diaphragm, spermicidal agents, and the vaginal sponge. So, there's a lot of surgical methods and chemical methods too. So before we begin with surgical and chemical, we also have the intrauterine device, which is a device inserted into the uterus through the cervix. So chemical methods such as the uh, synthetic estrogen and progesterone and oral contraceptives, or we call it the birth control pills, provides 99.9% .9 effectiveness. One of the most popular surgical methods to prevent, to prevent 
pregnancy is the vasectomy. So it is common method used to render male permanently infertile for the rest of his life without affecting the performance of the sex act.